You decided that you wanted to be a fashion designer quite early in your life. It was when you were about eight years old. Yeah, uh, it was um, it was quite uh, unusual in my in my family because I, I don't have anyone who who is in art or any sort of uh, kind of artistic uh, background. But somehow uh, I started to draw um, girls and start to dressing them uh, when I was eight. Everyone was surprised, but no one ever, you know, told me to not to do that. They always supported me, and um, they thought it's quite a strange hobby for uh, for their boy. Uh, but uh, I'm glad that they've never never stopped me doing that. I wanted to talk about Spring Summer 2012. It was inspired by the work of the Korean artist Kim Joon. The idea of, of June's work and the the idea of painting on a body, there's kind of an inherent body consciousness and it felt to me like the, it married very well with what you're known for, which are these very kind of body conscious clothes. I, I never want to kind of uh, change too much the female body because I, I really admire and I really feel uh, it's the most beautiful thing in the world, so I kind of try to um, be do kind of female friendly uh, uh, work. You have this kind of inte intelligent way of revealing body or showing it um, uh, from different different angle. So you kind of you draw attention to it, but it's uh, it's covered and uh, it reveals certain parts of the the body which kind of complements the uh, figure. And this is. Pretty much what I was, you know, kind of concentrating and looking at um, when I when I was combining all the elements within within the garment. I think it's interesting that you talk about um, the idea of not subjugating the body to themes, because a lot of designers they will tackle something like a fine art theme, and a lot of the time you can feel sometimes that the body gets lost inside it. It works both ways, but to to create that kind of um, uh, marriage between the, the the look that I want at the end and the uh, all the um, uh, elements that I use for uh, to create the collection I um, I draw on the body of uh, I basically couldn't work without my fitting model and uh, all the seams and all the proportions um, kind of created on her so it's 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 like doing sculpture, basically, because um, um, now I'm really get used to working with, you know, with the real, real body and real proportion. It's um, it's much easier to see, first of all, the final result and how it moves, and you know, you can see from you know different angles. And the way the way I work, it starts it actually when I used to study in. Um, uh, in, in St. Petersburg, in uh, uh, Academy, uh, they used to um, have those um, anatomy lessons and uh, I was really kind of drawn into all these kind of muscles and bones and just to learn how the body works, how the proportion, you know, inside the body. Uh, and it helped me actually a lot to, uh, to understand um, where where I should put the you know kind of right line and right seam not to um, destroy and you know all the um, beautiful you know kind of art and paintings that you know was from past that you know during uh, my studies uh, over there you know you could you can learn and admire you know the the, the beauty of uh, the classical painting and classical drawing and this all. All those things made me think very carefully about, you know, changing it and twisting it into something modern before I actually do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm quite lucky that I've had this, you know, opportunity to um, go through, you know, anatomy and all this um, classical education. Uh, that allowed me to be more confident and more uh, aware of uh, what was in the past and you know to, to, to change something and be brave about it.
I'm interested in the sort of fashion influences that you were exposed to in Georgia and kind of the, so really kind of the formative stuff. Um, do you remember kind of the fashion that you were seeing then and things? I ask because for me, a lot of your work really references um, sort of late 80s, early 90s, the very kind of powerful imagery that you saw with people like Claude Montana and Thierry Mugler, a little bit of Versace in there as well. Um, um, were those the kind of things you grew up with? Only what I could say that I, you know, I kind of I, I was influenced. I took from from Georgia is um, intensity and the the colors and the you know kind of uh, the deepness of the um, inspirations and like quite uh, intense way of presenting everything because. Uh, I don't know, like the culture is quite, you know, kind of loud and warm and this is, I think I have from, you know, living in Georgia and being Georgian, but the, um, it's, it's quite funny that you uh, mentioned um, the Mimigler and Montana because actually that, uh, when I was uh, 12, uh, that was, um, I remember sitting, um, uh, in front of uh, uh, TV in St. Petersburg and it was like uh, the first time when uh, fashion TV was uh, um, on, on um, available and I remember they were showing retrospective of uh, Thierry Mugler and I, I, I recorded it and I was like watching again and again uh, that was uh, one of the first designers that I I looked at, you know, in terms of the kind of retrospective way, not just what was, you know, printed, but like, um, so kind of archive uh, of uh, his designs, you know, before before libraries and before I could, you know, learn more about uh, Montana, Alaya, and uh, you know, all these kind of era designers that you know I love and admire. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it influenced me a lot and it's, because from then I, I knew this, that this was something that, um, there was something that really uh, kind of make me want to do that and, you know, have, have all those kind of shows and be a uh, creator. I think it's interesting that we talked about kind of intensity and, and it's also interesting, I mean I throw out the reference of it being 80s and 90s but I think there's constantly been people like Alaya who carry on doing that kind of, it's quite, for me it's, it's quite a sort of powerful silhouette and it's about a kind of powerful depiction of femininity. I think, I think it's going back to the um, nature and female figure and that's why, uh, you know, like what, what Alaya you know, does it's it's timeless and it, it was beautiful and it is beautiful and it will be beautiful and accessible all the time because uh, um, that this is like a formula of success because when you put it on you you look great you you feel great and it's not over the top it's it just for me, the, the formula of beauty doing that, the, the proportion, and I mean, in, in, my, in my view, like, my, kind of, it perfectly fits to how I see what is um, beautiful and what is um, desirable. So that's why I think they kind of carry on doing that, because this is, I think, never going to change. There's a lot of force in your clothes, and they're quite powerful, and sometimes they can be quite aggressive. I wondered if that was something that you perceived in them at all. Do you think there is a, a kind of a power and sometimes maybe an aggression in them? I didn't do it on purpose. It's it's happened very very naturally. Like uh, it's like during you know sketching process or you know fitting, I I do do change things and I, and um, until I feel satisfied whether it's, you know, I'm looking at this as a, as a sequence of their 
kind of different different images or it's one particular look and I guess when I feel satisfied it means you know a kind of a twisted uh, enough that it sometimes it could look you know restricted or uh, um, aggressive but I don't know this is pro I, this is kind of the vision that when I feel when I feel satisfied and um, I think uh, season after season, in a way, in a way, it's getting uh, getting softer and uh, less less aggressive. But I think restriction and uh, strictness to what I do, I think it always will stay because that what what makes me uh, feel good when I when I look. Um, even. You know, I would love to be really objective and you know, kind of look back and see things properly. Um, but um, I don't know. It just usually, usually I stop doing things when I feel, yeah, that's that's something uh, make me make my eyes feel feel comfortable. So sometimes it could be too tight or <laughs> too small, but that's how I see it. How important <laughs> is that idea of, of kind of really pushing the technique and the workmanship in what you're creating? I think it's very, very tactical and it's also based on education and who you admire and who you look at. And also, again, it's, it's all going and who you've been taught by. Uh, because when you have, when you set the standards for you uh, in every, in, in every single way, you kind of want to keep doing, never, never go, you know, below this level. So, um, I don't know, when I, when I, with, with the finishings and with with the techniques and with the quality, I know nowadays fashion become really fast, and uh, some kind of, some things can look good on the picture, but when you you know g g touch close up, it's not that special. And more I learn, more I do research with you know different techniques or embroidery or whatever it is. Uh, I always always feel that I want to create something that in 10 years someone, you know, young student or someone, some collector will have this dress, will feel same, same um, as I felt when I, you know, kind of when I bought like vintage Alaya dress or um, seeing, uh, you know, Pierre Cardin's work or, uh, you know, early Balenciaga, I mean, all this, I don't know, I really admire and really feel excited. This is what makes me want to do, do fashion.